in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you oh graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed one of the major things that the Holy Spirit seeks to do in your life is to release that power. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for preachers. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Please give it to us as we wrap up. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. With great power. It takes power to be a witness. A witness is a validator of a claim. Some of you here are in the judiciary. The assignment of a witness is to prove the truthfulness or otherwise of a statement. And there is no witness that comes alone. He always comes with a token of truthfulness called the evidence. Is that true? He calls us witnesses. And if it is true that we are witnesses, where is the evidence? Where is the evidence that Jesus lifts, heals, delivers, Jesus blesses, he opens doors. And sometimes in the court of law, the judge will tell you your witness is not strong enough to persuade him. You need strong enough witness. If we want to see the world bow to Jesus, we want to see systems and cultures shift to reveal and reflect the glory of God. It would take more than a sincere plea. It will take the power of God. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 7, the apostles now came to Jesus, then disciples, and they said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He never said you will be preachers. He never said you will be bankers. The names are just the geography of your witness. The generic name given to all saints. As far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned, is witness. With great power, they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible declares that great grace was upon them. Can I tell you, there are many of our loved ones who have refused to be saved because they are frustrated by the portrait of our Christian experience. Our Christian experience largely, now I'm speaking apostolically, not just to you. I'm speaking to all who are following and who will even follow. There are many, many believers. If you add evidence to your speakings, there will be many things. There are many. Do you know the reason why evangelism is hard in our days? Because this is a world that is desperate for proof. Everything science says, it tries to prove. So people are already used to backing up statements with evidence. When you are speaking to intelligent people, you don't come to propose ideas. In our world, we use statistics and we use data. Is that true? When you say Africa is the poorest nation, they say prove it. When you say America is the richest nation, they say prove it. For someone... God is, he brought you to this conference to tell you it's time to begin to prove the validity in your office. It's time to begin to prove the validity of the things that you believe. For many years you have been saying God can change people's story. It has become like, it has become like a statement with no power. But the day it happens through your life, then from your life to others, did you not read what happened in John 4? Ladies and gentlemen, we are Bible students. Jesus meets this woman at the well with five men in her life, the six not even being her husband. And Jesus begins a discourse with her. In her arrogance, she thinks he's the eighth man coming. And then they begin the discussion. And she finds out that this man is more interested in her life, her soul. Perceiving he was a prophet, she now brought the matters of worship. 
And at the end of that, she was marvelously convinced. The Bible says she left everything. That is how powerful the power of God can be. It can make men leave everything. She came to fetch water and she left water. Who told you they cannot leave what they are doing? It's because there's not enough evidence. You've not convinced them enough to be able to leave what they are doing. To say, I choose Jesus. She ran and told everybody, come see a man. She didn't say, come see Jesus. I don't know his name. I don't care. All I know is come see a man who told me everything that I had done. The people did not come because they believed. They didn't come because they loved Jesus. They came because of the depth of her witness, her persuasion. When they came and encountered Jesus for himself, they said this about that, the, 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 the encounter with Jesus. Now we believe, not because of you. It says, for we have seen for ourselves that someone will look at your life and say, I know from January till April, things were not working well. But I heard you talk about one conference, I don't even know the name. In one month, look at 10 years being added to your life. Can I tell you, please do not make the mistake of saying witness, results, and evidence does not matter in the kingdom. The end of all arguments is the presence of a result. I preached a message last year called Commanding Salvation Over Territories. And in that message, I teach that results are also evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. There is a kind of evangelism that your, your lips is not what should preach it. Results are preachers. And they have their audience. A territory can hear that preacher. I can tell you results preach well. John 4, 48. Except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus said, ye will not believe. The Holy Spirit. This is why God put it in the heart of our Father to bring this topic, to say, listen, the reason why certain things are not happening in my life and your, li uh, and your life is because probably we have embraced every other thing. But we have pushed this gracious spirit away. We've left him as the business of apostles and prophets and preachers. What does he know about money, we say? What does he know about raising children, we say? I'm an experienced counselor. Congratulations. It took his breath for you to be that. And he's wise enough to add anything to your life that is not there. The Holy Spirit does not take away from men. He adds. He multiplies. Look what he did with Jesus. Do I need to tell you the great men in the Bible, ordinary men, weak men. It says time will fail me to talk of men like Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. Women received their dead back to life. They shot the mouth of lions. It is by faith. But it was through the spirit. Through the spirit. It is by him that we leap over a wall. It is by him that we run through a troop. Every time you see extraordinary exploits in the life of an individual, it is impossible to credit a certain threshold of results just to intellect. Now my story and we end. I began my pursuit loving the Lord even though I came from a background of missionaries, people who loved the Lord. My grandfather happened to be the first trustee of one of the great denominations in the north. And you would think just having that rich heritage of a Christian background would automatically translate to an excelling life. No, that did not happen. I got to a point where the more I read my Bible, I started asking questions, I asked preachers, I asked several people questions, and people nicely and diplomatically just dodged away the question. And that's one of the ways that destiny cries. It leaves you with questions that your lifetime will be the answer. Days turned to weeks, and I began to explore the life and the materials of men who were producing the kind of result 
that looked like what the Bible was saying. Because the Bible says to follow them. There are some them who have obtained what you are looking for. And I remember among the many encounters that I had, some of you have heard them in my teachings, but I'll just bring one for the purpose of this discussion. My apologies for stretching you on your time. So I'm on my way going for a crusade and Red Hat Bonke is the person doing the preaching of blessed memory. I was already preaching and God was already using me. But you see, there is a kind of hunger that when you have, it swallows up all your achievements and it makes it look like you've not started anything. That is the spirit of a champion. The arrival mentality is why many people remain as mediocres. Champions always act like they've not started. It is the character of all champions. The passion to press. At the end of his life, he said, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me, he said, I press. The apostle speaking. So I went for Reinhard Bonke's crusade desperately searching for an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The bits that I had seen and gotten my own encounters, several other gifts in the bodies, in the body who had blessed me. And in that crusade, we stood there the first day with the simplicity, childlike faith. He preached and mighty miracle, supernatural manifestations of the power of God. And I said, this is it. Transformation is difficult until you have a reference. You can't change into nothing. There must be something. There must be an individual that personifies what you are attempting to become. Even if you desire to be greater, you have to first attain onto that level before you go greater. By the second day, I made up my mind because I understand that one of the laws of impartation is that it answers to honor. Honor to both God and the careers. You never receive from a colleague. Colleague mentality is why many people never receive in the body of Christ. And so I made up my mind, didn't have any much money to give him, wouldn't even have access to him. But then I said, at least let me serve. And here's what I did. Crowds of people already coming. I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs and sick people. And I said, let me sow this seed of honor by helping the people and let me wheel them in the front. And while I requested that they allow me wheel, they said I was not part of the committee I said what committee you don't know where I traveled from committee you are joking I came here with desperation and hunger and as I pushed those people to the front I said Lord this is how you will honor my meetings too the Bible says and without all contradiction he said the less is blessed of the greater there's a reason why I'm telling you this story and I stood there for six hours standing hungry but determined Tired but determined until your future becomes greater than your today. You are not qualified to get there. You have to be able to endure and stretch yourself from border to border. I stood there, my face fixed upon that man. And he preached a very annoyingly simple message for, I mean, with respect to the kind of passion I brought for that crusade ground. I brought to that crusade ground. Simple message. And when he was done, he was going to take a cup of water to now start ministering the baptism. And here's why I told you this story now. My eyes were open for the first time. I was not strange to visions by that time. God had helped me. But then that would be the first time. The visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. My eyes were open. Tens of thousands of people on that crusade ground. And then I see this giant bird without exaggeration. It would be as big as this auditorium, hovering round, completely white and glistening. I thought everybody was seeing it. What kind of a bird is this? And it had like bands, like silvery bands. It was not flying, it was soaring. I was watching this phenomenal sight. What is happening to me? Someone explain to me. And the Spirit of God, by that encounter, I just went to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. And listen, I had a voice 
that said to me, the union between the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what produces the miraculous. It was not just something I read in my Bible. By the time I returned from that vision, I had backed the stage. I didn't even know when I turned. From that day, among many other phenomenal experiences, my life changed. Because I said, I do not want to bring a gospel I cannot prove. I read the stories of T.L. Osborne. I read the stories of Papa Hagen. Those who have joined the cloud of witnesses today. These men have handed the baton and I made up my mind that in my lifetime, my generation will not fail. That we will stretch ourselves from border to border. Someone is sitting listening to me and this same cry is welling up within your spirit. Help them please. I'm speaking by the spirit of God because the anointing of the spirit right now is going to begin to rest on people people i want you to please bring them out right now just a few minutes and we're done i'm stretching my hands please bring them out there is a reason i ask that they come out i sense in my spirit that there are even women after the order of deborah there are mantles help them please i introduce to you the paraclete of the father i introduce to you the spirit of grace the maker of men please whether you are or shall not help them. Shalike parike toske de balakos, krante parika tosia tabash. I'm praying. Listen, I'd like you to be very, very sensitive. Something is going to happen that will change your life. The Lord is telling me there are some of you. He has shown you dreams. He has shown you visions. You've seen yourself doing mighty things. But the issue is the mantle and the grace to walk this thing. Let me now begin to pray according as the Lord is leading me. The first prayer point right now is that there are people who the mantle for prayer and supplication, the art of holding on to the horns of the altar. Where are they? I stretch my hands. Receive that impartation now. Bring them out. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Let that anointing rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. From the choir to the congregation, I open up your spirit. Let the fountain of the deep begin to gush out from your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women like Anna the prophetess that will pray revival down upon fountain of life upon Nigeria and Africa. I want to pray for someone here. There are apostolic and prophetic mantles hovering around the earth, hovering around Africa, and Nigeria in this end time is playing a strange role. I want to release that grace. I don't know who, but I'm seeing the number 11. 11 people receive that grace right now. I stretch my hands. Take that grace. Bring them out. Take that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Shabkete parakatosh. You will see men of fire rise from fountain of life. Old and young together catch fire by the spirit of the living God. Preaching the gospel with proof, the evidence of signs and wonders. Now hear me. For those of you who have listened to my recent teachings, I've been heralding, sir, the Lord revealed to me that one of the graces that is being restored to the body of Christ is the healing mantle. I know we may have seen pockets of healing, but it looked like when a generation of fathers left, it looked like a, there, there was a gap in the healing ministry and just a few people here and there and everywhere i have traveled there has been a clarion call mantles don't leave the earth these mantles are still on earth and even in this place tonight i know there is someone maybe not everybody i want to stretch my hands fire is coming on certain people right now is a healing mantle for the end time 
Father, where are they? I decree and declare. Receive that grace right now. Men and women, I ignite you with that fire of healing. Please don't be tired. We're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Please hold and bring for me two people right now. One gentleman and one lady. They will begin to run by the anointing. Hold them so they don't injure themselves and bring them out. We have not come to you with cunningly devised fables. There is a pastor that is watching. The Lord is revealing to me there is a pastor. You are in Lagos here. You pastor a ministry. You are an overseer. You are watching and you have been crying for this healing mantle. This is what God is revealing to me. And, and it's not just for self-aggrandizement. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May that grace rest upon you now. Now hear me please. Please listen. There's a reason why I ask that these people come out. Bring a lady for me right now who is going to shout a loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Please bring her out. This is by the spirit. A very loud shout. Bring her out. Now listen please. Hear me. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you will never, never, never be ordinary. There are many of us mothers, fathers, young people. Hear me, fountain of life. There is a dimension of grace that God wants to deposit even concerning the new that he's doing in this church. I'm telling you this by prophecy because I sense in my spirit that much prayer has been going on in this church there is a season ending in this church and a new season beginning hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking this to you by the spirit of god there is a season ending and it is the ministry of prayer and intercession that is going to usher in the new season i'm telling you this by the spirit of god from the choir to all the departments god will start staring it in the hearts of people you will see young men rise with fire people of power and grace hallelujah praise the name of the lord please can you spare me five more minutes hallelujah five more minutes who is i'm hearing the name leko leko come your life is about to change. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Please hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Sadly and unfortunately, I know that the prophetic and the apostolic in parts of this nation and around the world has been abused with all kinds of things. Please make no mistake to think everybody is like everybody. There are people who have been forged from the furnace of affliction. There are people who have worked with God and the price they gave for all of God is all of themselves. Are we together now? I'm saying this so you do not think when you see a manifestation of power, miracles you just think everybody know there are people who love god sincerely what do you do my friend Estate. Huh? this man realize. what do you do i don't have a job at the moment i want to pray for you because you are a, a, a mighty savior listen god is going to use you for the sake of your family you love the lord sincerely but i'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing all kinds of satanic manifestations around your life. 
please just lend me five minutes. There are two things I need to do by the Spirit before I step out of this place. My friend, can I pray for you? Who is Victoria? Victoria. I'm hearing a name, Victoria. Victoria. Is there someone like that? Please make sure you don't tell lies. We are serious people here. Hallelujah. I know the lion, I know the lamb, I believe in the lion, I believe in the lamb, and I will follow the lion, I follow the lamb, I know the lion, something is happening to two of you, two of you that came out here. There is an anointing that is coming upon you and that oppression. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My friend, look at me. Don't cry. God sent you here. Look at me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Go and write it. May, June, July, these three months, God will change your life in a way that will surprise you. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Please don't come out so it doesn't embarrass you. You are owing. You are, you are owing serious money. And the way it is now, it is only the prophetic that can help you. You are owing money that is depressing you. You've been having issues even with your wife from what God is showing me. But in the name of Jesus, by reason of this conference, we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and we declare, he said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of that situation now. Taking the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace and denial. There's no need to cry cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Oh, man, my head. That will be someone's song in the spirit. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. Please listen. And I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility. Sir, as I came in and I sat down here, you notice I just sat quietly here. Because there is a way God reveals things to me. As soon as I, that door was open, I was hearing the sounds of chains. And when I hear, listen, when I hear the sounds of chains, it just is, is a prophetic way of showing me that there are destinies here that have been tied by reasons that you may not know why you are doing all you are doing. The Bible said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I'm about to pray right now. If God be God, I come by this mantle and by the spirit of the living God. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus and fire will come upon you. Everything that is not of God, it must give way. Are you ready, fountain of life? At the count of three, one, two, three, shout Jesus. I declare be free now. Be free now. I I break you free from every ordinance of darkness. I release. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. Help them please. Blotting out every handwriting. Yokes of witchcraft and ancestry and bloodline be broken now. be broken hallelujah please don't be embarrassed I'm seeing a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb this is what God is showing me 
I can, I'm, I'm seeing the number four, like four years. You are trusting God. Who is that? Make sure you are married. Come. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and say, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, in this church you will celebrate children in the mighty name of Jesus. Those trusting the Lord, can I pray for them, sir? In the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one of you. One of you who came out here. I just saw it now in a vision. Right now as I speak. I'm, I just saw fire coming on one of you. Who is standing in for uh, fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the medical situation is. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing two of you. I'm seeing like chains. Just around your stomach. I declare and declare right now every demonic thing that has tied you here at fountain of life at this word explosion be released now be released now be released now release them now help them please release them now I cost that spirit release them now in the name of Jesus release them now by the power of the Holy Ghost release them now in the name of Jesus Hear me, as Eli prophesied to Anna, as Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, I speak to you according to the time of life. Return with your miracle children. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you are trusting God for healing, this will be the last thing I'll do for sake of time. Please, I want you to lay your hand wherever you are trusting God for. If you have never believed in a miracle in your, in your life, give God a chance this once. Miracles are not fake. Mm -mm. I'm a product of the healing power of Jesus. I wish I had time. I would have told you my own situation. Sometimes one of the ways God prepares you to be a blessing is to give you an opportunity to pass through the afflictions you will be, dis you will be helping people from so that you can have the compassion to minister to them. There is a woman here, you are already pregnant. I need to pray for you. I'm seeing a report that is not good. I'm not a prophet of doom. You are already pregnant. I'm seeing pregnancy. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, anything that wants to destroy your life and that of your baby, out of her now out in the name of Jesus let that be the end of it for the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit please lay your hands I want to pray we may not have the time to take testimonies but do feel free to testify during the conference and for those of you who are watching across the nations of the earth here is an opportunity to be healed no matter how long it has been he gave us the power to bring the life of Jesus to as many. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone, your spouse, your children. I'm seeing someone lifting photos there. You can stand in for someone. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb. Help them. Please keep your hands. You are great. Don't sing. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. Ah, the healing power of Jesus is moving across this place. 
There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. I'm about to pray. A lady is going to shout a loud shout to the hearing of everybody. Immediately after that shout, the healing power of God will begin to move. Father, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of infirmity, every devil of darkness, masquerading itself as a medical condition the bible declares that he went about healing all day that were oppressed i command that spirit to let you go now and now in the name of jesus i bring you life life to your body peptic ulcer be healed now bone conditions be healed now There is a lady here, I'm seeing you have an issue of blood. You don't have to come out, literally. An issue of blood, this is, this is a draining, embarrassing situation. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I command that demonic thing to stop now. There's someone, you have a problem with your heart. You cannot lie down on this side of your chest to the bed. You are going to have excruciating pain. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing for you now. Asthma, be healed now. Total blindness, partial blindness, be healed now. There's someone you are having severe pain just at the, the, your back, the lumbar area. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed right now. There's a woman, your right breast, you've been having severe pain and you've been afraid to go to the hospital because you are hoping it does not become anything that, you know, something funny, you don't want to hear any reports, but you've been having very severe pain. I don't care what the situation is. In the name of he who died and rose from the dead, let that pain leave you now. I'm seeing, I don't know if it's a gentleman now or a lady, you have a very embarrassing skin condition. This is something, I don't know, it's, it's like, it looks like eczema, but it's not eczema. You've been trying to treat it. Right now, the power of God is coming upon you. I declare, be healed now. Be healed now. There is a man here, you have a medical condition that is common to men. In the name of Jesus, I am praying for you. The Lord gives you a miracle right now. There is a lady whose hair falls. You know, just like a cancer patient, you are losing your hair. And you are, it's even beginning to surprise you. You've discussed this with your mother. This is what I'm seeing. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, your healing comes right now. Now, whether I mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be healed now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, I, 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 listen carefully. Listen carefully. I want to charge you by the Spirit of God that you take the time to listen to this teaching again even including the prayer and pray it for yourself and for your loved ones and you will marvel and wonder at what God does to your life. Would you spare me a minute to speak favor over your life? Hmm. I don't know how people live without it. In fact, it is impossible to live without it. The proof of favor is not money. No. No. Money is the proof of value, not favor. The proof of favor is the tripartite coexistence of unusual kindness, unusual access, and unusual acceptance. When these tripartite forces are working in the life of a man, 
you truly carry the favor of God. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Exodus, I mean Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 of the same chapter 2. It says, And the king loved Esther above or more than all the virgins the women and she obtained grace he now set a royal crown can i tell you the truth that there is truly a grace for favor that it when the grace for favor comes upon you it is only a blind man that cannot bless you but for as long as a person looks at you they are compelled by god to express unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual access i release my faith with our father and pastor here to speak over someone maybe it's been a wilderness for you you've been trusting god to come out of shame and reproach in the name of jesus the one who gave gifts to men from the depth of my heart i speak carry this grace for favor carry this grace for favor favor in your business favor in your family favor in your career favor in your church in the name of jesus christ let it begin to work for you and for all of you who are out here i stretch my hands i've prayed for you and i declare you will return with testimonies to the glory of the name of the lord Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. My conscience will not allow me if I go without doing this. Please, my apologies. I want to make an altar call. Please, let's minimize movement. I believe in Jesus. I will not sleep sound if I walk away from this place without giving someone an opportunity. In every meeting, even in a conference like this, there will always be someone who is ready to win that war who is ready to make a decision for jesus listen very carefully the matter of jesus is not the matter of church and christianity and religion no jesus came to give us life there are two groups of people i'm going to call very quickly our time is gone number one those who are saying apostle fountain of life if you will give me an opportunity i truly want to make it right with jesus I do not want to die in my sin. I want my soul saved. Number two, those who are saying, I remember making this call, but for some reason my life has gone haywire and I cannot truly say I have a functional relationship with this Jesus. I told you in order of priority, the first and the noblest encounter that any man can have in this side of God's kingdom is encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any for there is none other name given unto men by which we must be saved. I will count one to five. We have just a minute for this. Wherever you are, I want you to be bold. I want you to be serious. I want you to be sincere. To leave your seat and come and stand right here. I count one to five. Don't wait for anybody to be the first. This is between you and the Lord Jesus. There is one person who must come out here. I begin my counting now. One. Come. Run to Jesus. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour. Don't kneel, please stand for space. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come. Three, if you're coming, run. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour. I need thee, come bless me me now my Savior I thank you and I salute you for your courage Jesus said if you reject me before men I will reject you I will deny you before my father may I please request for those who are making this call online maybe you are following online or watching by way of a rebroadcast here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life 
And for those of you who are in front here, may I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. Amen. Father, thank you for this once. I... Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.